what do you mean by rule set so rule sets are created by utilizing the attributes which we just created the match columns which we which just created so if i will go into match rule set there can be n number of rule sets first thing but at a time you can utilize only one what do you mean by that when we go ahead and use batches to go ahead and run batch jobs okay so over here in the match we need to select which rule set we want to utilize and in match rule set there are certain number of other things which needs to be keep in mind one is match filter what are the types of matches there are two types one is exact and the other one is fuzzy match rules in exact there are two types one is segment matching and whole value this is default this is something you can go ahead and select and in multiple cases you will see that when there are types of matching segment matching is treated as a third type in multiple areas and multiple people in the interview they say there are three types of matching one is exact second is fuzzy and third is segment matching this is a common mistake which many people do the segment matching they have gone ahead and treated it as a separate matching type it is not a separate matching type it's a sub type of exact okay now how we can go ahead we'll just go ahead create a name and over here we'll see certain other things which is search level search level remember this property pen records how the search level should be done typical means it will just go ahead and search in those 10 records then move to next 10 records it's a binary binary means you have 100 records so basically it will go ahead and put 10 records in each batch if there is any matches which are being done so those matches and the distinct record will be coming up from over here and over here and then the output of these will be treated and output of these will be treated and then so on and so on it will go ahead and do match then there is narrow in narrow it will just match 10 10 10 and that's it it's done in exhaustive and extreme it will go ahead and do matches with this particular to all these and this to all these if not then it will take in extreme it will be in a totally different way it goes these 10 records which are in batch it will first match with a single record with all the 10 records that is how they have written in the background so what type of search level you want to utilize with those tokens
because token actually goes ahead and creates index for itself. So you narrow, just only will take all those tokens which are starting with same alphabet and it will get it done. The entire value, like three or four or five, whatever will be exact, it will go ahead and match earlier. Standard will take its own time and how it will go ahead and go forward. So accordingly, the search level is being done. Now, the search by rules, whatever rules we are going ahead and creating, do you want the search of the records to be matched done by those rules? If you have seven different rules or four different rules, those four different types of searching will be done. Okay. So that is what is there. Now I stated a filter. Over here, the filter and over here was also a filter. Right? What is the difference between these two? So let's say you were being told that from your 100 records, around 50 records needs to be go through with first match rule. Match rule means this match rule set. I'm actually talking about 30, uh, 30 other with second match rule set. And somewhat around 60 with a third match rule set. Now, I just added more number of records than 20, right? So it may be considering these records also in this particular part. So filtering is a where condition where you want to see all those rule sets on which particular segment of records. So a segment matching and a filter matching is almost the same. It segments the records according to where condition, the entire records. It only goes ahead and takes the token value in a segmented way. What match rule set is there for? Match rule sets will be going ahead and creating multiple rules according to the condition where we can state that the record is duplicate. Which means are all rules are set of conditions where we say that records are duplicate. Okay. which means there can be one or n number of rules. Correct? So over here we are clear? Yeah, yeah. And one rule set which is over here can comprise of multiple rules. So rule sets are combinations of all the rules slash conditions, right? Which means one or n number of rules creates one rule set. Clear? Yeah. yeah. Third thing is one rule set or one rule or condition, anything which you say it as. So if MDM terminology, then we'll say the rule, one match rule will use one or n number of match column to create. 
Okay. Now in that rule, it can be a exact or fuzzy. And fuzzy comprises of exact columns plus fuzzy columns. It might be only fuzzy columns as well, but we always go ahead with one exact column with that. So that our rule becomes much more powerful or you can say it gives you more trustworthy threshold. Exact only comprises of exact columns. It can be one or n. So if I'm stating over here both, that means it's one or n, right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. So till over here, we are clear. Yeah, yeah, clear till here. Okay. Now, second thing or the fourth thing is the rules which we are creating, we stated exact and present, right? Now, when we create an exact rule, we have a facility of going with segment matching. Okay. Now, what do you mean by segment matching? Segment matching says, do you want to use the whole value for the token? Or you want just a partial value? So over here, segment means value for that particular rule. Okay. Then we talked about filter. Filter means segment of records. where the rule set needs to be applied. Getting the difference between segment and a filter. I think a uh, segment would be basically on a particular column kind of thing, right? Segment is on a proper a rule, not on rule set, on a rule where filter is applied on a rule set. The rules means it will be only utilizing the exact attribute or attributes to take either the entire value or a segment of value.
whereas filter will create a segment of records where your match rule set will work. Which means you created one rule set for one source system, let's say. And this rule set should only work on CRM. The other rule set should only be utilized for SAP. So you are distinguishing between the records, right? You don't care about what token value we are selecting, but what we are doing? We are bifurcating between the records what all records we will be utilizing for this match rule set. Clear difference between segment and filter. So if I say segment, then I can, I will be only utilizing around 80% of the value. I will not take 100% of the value to match. Okay. And where we mostly do these things, where there are alpha numeric values and the numeric values which can be changed. is always in the start not at the end which means mostly it is utilized in products because type of a product is always first and then the value is generated for that so when you state this whole value or partial value is that is that that match percentile or not the exact value or I mean the exact token value the token value okay. Okay. okay so till over here we are good Now I stated another word, which is threshold, right? Threshold is nothing but a gate where the percentage match is either up or down. According to that, we are saying that the records are duplicate and needs to be merged automatically or manually or they are distinct. This is what a threshold means. Let's say we have gone ahead and created our threshold as 95% for auto merge. Anything with a 95% match or more will be treated as auto merge. The process will go itself and merge those records. Okay. If we say 85% and above, these two things, if we have gone ahead and said, 
for manual. That means what is the manual uh, limit? It is between 85 to 94.9%. Because if it reaches 95%, it will automatically go ahead and merge itself from the process. Okay. Now seventh, which I stated was math jobs or math. When we have multiple n number of rule set, then your one will be default. Okay, which means when we will be going ahead and scheduling our jobs, we need to select all the match rules, which we have rule sets, which we have created so that all those rule sets can be run. So for running these match rooms, we saw in our uh, second lecture, I think, we saw in batch viewer, we have match job, right? So those match jobs, we have to select the match rule set, which rule set it has to run. So if you have multiple, then you will be going ahead and running all those match jobs with each rule set which you have defined. Otherwise, only one rule set will be running. Okay. Of these things we'll see. No issues in that. We are good over here, right? Then, yeah. last thing which I stated a uh, rule set. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Uh, one will be default, you said, right? Like, what will be default here? Uh, like, which rule set will be default here? Which will have, so let's say if I'll go ahead. You remember this old asterisk we saw in lens function also conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. So if we have to switch those defaults, we just go ahead and switch like this. So that becomes my default rule. So if you have multiple, that means it become one of them will be default. If you just have one, it is always a default. Okay. A uh, default means it won't be having any rule set or it will be. No, it uh, will be what? having rule set, but mm -hmm. you don't have to go ahead and set it in the batch job because a default is always selected okay when we run a match job okay and just right now i forgot what i was telling about rule sets 
on the yeah so in rule set wit stated that columns will be utilized right so what from where these columns will be coming up only these column names field names you are seeing right now over here right only those field names we will see so which means all the created match columns and match key will be seen or visible while creating the match rules okay then in rules we will need to have priority which means we will be shifting the rule to top which is most important and later will be less priority which means if my first rule itself will go ahead and say that it's a duplicate then my later rules will not run for the those records which means if you have 10 rules and your first rule itself says that it's a duplicate your nine rules will never run it will directly state that okay this is duplicate by this particular rule that's it done okay okay so match rule set is clear or not we'll be now show we'll be now seeing how we'll be going ahead and doing all these things is it clear now uh so we'll be going ahead and creating creating the, the rules we created yeah. the rule set hmm. it's just by adding over here and putting the name that's how we yeah. create rule set okay how we create rules we'll just see right now and how we will shift it to if it's an auto or if it's a manual how we'll be going and putting it in a different zone or if i would say uh, enabling or disabling the auto merge for that we'll see that right Are we good? Yeah. So basically, how can we go ahead and create a match rule just by adding over here? So now, what is the strategy we want to utilize? Do we want to utilize exact, or do we want to utilize fuzzy? First is the strategy which we are trying to choose. Now we will go ahead and choose fuzzy. and we'll use the exact column also we'll say because in this only i wanted to state that what is actually needed so match purpose it's the algorithm which will then go ahead use your token in a proper function to go ahead and match your records which means there are these many purposes so how would we know which particular purpose is utilized so all these are you can say a back end functions address will be holding your address part 1 country city postal code address part 1 means your address line part 2 means city country state and third is postal code which is required 
organization your organization name and address is required division a department name is utilized household there would be person name address the complete address basically telephone number and all those things are required so in that kind of way we have all these things in place whereas individual will have a person name address part one at least and any exact attribute what is the match level typical conservative or loose then acceptance limit this is your threshold now this is something if over here we are going with disabled then over here we will go ahead and create by using zero if we are using it as one which is enabled then we'll set the acceptance limit according to what percentage we have chosen you can see an individual needs ID and SSL. So all those things are linked. Now this is a switch which I was talking about. And what purpose you will be utilizing that has a complete list for creating or for the jobs which we are utilizing, the match process. So type is fuzzy and we have a auto merge as no, right? So how to flick that particular switch? So first thing is, do you see a black line on the top? Hmm. It's the distinguisher between a auto merge and a manual merge. And this is the Auto merge and manual merge flick. It's yes, and this is. But when you will have more number of rules, then you first have to shift it till this black line, and then only you will be able to flip that switch. Let's say we go ahead and we say it would be an exact, and we go over here. Now you'll only see exact columns. We'll go ahead. This one, when we select this, your entire subsection of over here will be segment matching. Matches all data. If you are allowing the segment matching and you want all the data to be enabled or not all the data to be enabled. So this is for that particular purpose. Okay, so let's say this was down over here and now I have to just go ahead and use this rule set to be an auto merge. You can see over here, I'm not able to do any flips. So what I have to do, first I have to move this thing up, then only I'll be able to make it as a yes. So let's say this was that. Now this will be you need to go ahead and merge. So first you need to make it till the top. Mm, then only okay. you will be able to flip the switch. Yeah, fine. Okay. okay. So this is what it does. Okay. Are we clear with this one? We'll have a second rule set over here so that I can showcase you. We'll just save it. So primary key match rule, I'll just showcase you what it means, or what it gives us. So it's a key combination and the auto merge will be yes or no. So I have not created any staging table, so that's why it's stating. 
we'll just go ahead create staging tables Now, if I go over here in the matter merge, I'll be able to get from which particular source system. The primary keys from the source system are seen. Then, do I want to auto merge those records or not? If I say yes, then those records which will be coming in and they have exact same primary key, it will go ahead and merge those records. So this is mostly utilized when you are seeing that your source system are storing the data, the unique data with same primary keys. Any questions? So if this is enabled, uh, I mean, uh, which one will be happening first? I mean, what we are defining in the match rules or what this is there in this primary? First. This will go okay. first. Okay. Because these match rule sets will not work until and unless we go ahead and run the match job. Oh, okay. So uh, this will be triggered when data is loaded or? Correct. Oh, we don't have to initiate in that process. match and merge row. Okay. Correct, okay. in the load process. Okay. Because it does not require the tokens. Hmm. Okay. Right. Okay. Once these are being created, so and the tokens and your match rules are being done, and this actually comes into play. Over here, you will be seeing that how many records were there, which has tokens generated for them. And tokens will be generated from character K to character C. The starting characters. Merge settings. Do you want to have distinct from this rule or with auto rule sets. Normally over here, we don't go ahead and do anything because these are distinct systems. If you want to go ahead and do not want the tables or the source systems to go ahead and merge together, if there is any other related things you want to go ahead and do a external push that okay these are certain number of things where you don't want to match the records or to merge the records you can find the match but you do not want the merge to happen so at that level we go ahead and set these settings and i have not seen in any project where they state that, okay, we want to find the match, but we don't want to merge them. Either they'll go ahead and say that we want the duplicates to be merged from CRM only and from SAP only. So we always go ahead and create two different rule sets and run 
one after the other for all those things. Okay. Okay. So that is a sum up of match and merge. Second thing, which is left out. So in trust score, it's first name. You'll see maximum trust and minimum trust. Now you can see CRM and see source system. Right? So how much do you trust this particular app review it will be shifted over here. And a minimum trust is required so that later part of the time, you can see the units and DK, right? That in this much time, that trust level should go till what level? If you don't want it to be decayed, you just give at both places, you give the same values, let's say 90. If I have a zero over here, then you will see a 90% to a 0% will be there in later part of the year. So I'll say 95, you can see that two levels, but at over here, somewhere over here, these will become similar. But if you do not want anything to be go down beyond a certain point, you will just state like this. After this much time, my CRM will go. Now my admin source system, as I stated earlier, that if I'm doing, if I have something as coexistence, then my this thing should be equal to or more than the highest. And this should be equal or more than the lowest of so from over here, it should be highest. And from over here, it should be with exactly same or more with highest trust scores. Okay. So that it can relate the data which is being updated or manipulated from UI and the data which is coming from source system. There is a graph file which say which shows you if you want a slow initial and rapid later means you want to drop the trust score initially less and later on more or rapid in first and later on slower or in a linear phase. Offset is something from when do you want to start this particular slow initial, uh, the decrease in trust score. From which particular date you want. So this is very useful when you know that the systems which you will be taking in are going to be our first systems which are, let's say, those will be giving you the highest values or the best values possible. But within six months, that particular system will be sunsetted, which means there won't be any updates or anything which will be done. So you will go ahead, set a higher trust score and set a linear trust score. And accordingly, you will utilize a offset date. or other source systems because that will go ahead and go down. So offset date, let's say if I'll go ahead and select this for August, you can see it actually went shifted. Right? So you see on which particular time your graph is going down and you will set an offset date for that particular source system with a higher trust value. Clear? Yeah. 
so this sunset part is something which you will see in a regular phase so only part which we have to see is the questions which we have to ask to the customer are that once the system will be sunset then which system will take its place but by that time what all data you want to go ahead and uh, or i would say which the source system if that there is no data or a null data or you want to go ahead and see what you have to do with that particular part at that point of time do you want to still use the null values do you want to go ahead and update the values from another source system and accordingly we'll go ahead and set these things okay do any changes in trust score later part of the day when the system is already there in the production then any changes over here we need to go ahead and run a job which is synchronized job, which might end up in updating the values how the values are being showcased to you at the current scenario okay but if you go ahead and enable these trust score in a form then you don't have to worry about the trust score to be changed later it will take care of itself but if you go ahead and change the trust score then there might be certain number of records where there was no updates which were done from other system but still the values will be changed for them because the trust value for those records will also get updated so in that case in other words let's say you are having two records in cross reference okay one from sap one from crm okay the value from crm for this particular record was x and this was y okay there was no update which was done for 6 months 6 months these record were exactly same if we have gone ahead and enable this so until the data is been updated <coughs> from any source okay the value in the base object will be still shown from crm system okay but if we go ahead and update the trust score after 6 months to showcase the sap data and then we synchronize the records because unless or until we go ahead and synchronize it it will not let you load the data so once you go ahead and do that even if there was no update now the value which will be updated over here will be y which is not correct so that is why we always try to set it over here for the first time itself okay and that is the reason when we go in mdm your mdm can never go into pure agile if somebody says that they have went with went to in mdm with pure agile methodology i can bet that they don't understand what agile means because mdm is one architecture where you have to design the base level configuration in the start you can change multiple things but you cannot go ahead and state that okay we need to change our match and merge rules you cannot state that okay we now we have to go ahead and change the trust code you cannot say that okay these are the tables which we were utilizing you can go ahead and delete the tables itself or delete 
numerous attributes. The MDM architecture is always extendable, but it is never reduced. Baseline is never changed in MDM. It never changed. That is why whenever we go ahead and analyze any new project, we always go ahead and do analysis of all those source system which the MDM will be going ahead and taking part in. It can be happen that the customer will have 20 source system which they are actually want to in, embed in MDM. And they say that you start with two source system and later they'll be adding one after the other. But we need to see what all attributes are there in those source systems so that the model which we will be going ahead and deciding for MDM should not go ahead in a major changes. So your end to end path is always clear in MDM. 